Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the latest update for Elementor Pro and specifically the new widget that's been added and that's the ability to add a testimonial carousel to your website. So let's take a look at how we can use that. So as I said at the introduction, this is an Elementor Pro feature. So if you don't have the Elementor Pro installed and set up, you're going to need to purchase a copy. And if you're thinking of purchasing a copy, please consider using the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link and it helps support the channel and everything we do. Anyway, let's take a look at how we can use this new widget and start adding our own testimonials into our website. So I've created a page and I'm going through and at the moment I want to sort of drop in a nice testimonial section at the bottom to allow people to see how good these presets are that we're selling. So if we just go down on the left hand side you can see under the pro elements we now have a new option which is the testimonial carousel. That's a pretty straightforward carousel, all the normal options you expect are in there. So let's just drag that over and drop it onto our page where you want to sort of insert that. Now, if we take a look at the left-hand side and all the options available, you're going to see that this is very familiar if you're used to dealing with any kind of the sliders that Elementor Pro gives us. You can see we have options for each one of the slides as the first option, the content section. If we expand that out, you can see there's our content. In this example, it's the testimonial itself. Underneath that, we have the image of the person that we want to include in our testimonial. Then we've got the name and their title or position in the company. So you can see we can duplicate this if we want to quickly add in new elements. We can simply just click on the duplicate icon. We've now got four elements instead of just the three. Alternatively, we can click on add item at the bottom. If we want to get rid of any of these, we've got the X to delete it. All very quick and intuitive. Next up, we've got the skin, and that allows us to choose us from two different designs. The default, which is what you can see in front of us at the moment, and the bubble option, which is a slightly different version. So it looks like a speech bubble. Let's go back to default for this example. Then we've got the layout. So you can see we've got image inline stacked above left and right. So you can see if we change that, we can choose how we want our particular testimonial to be displayed. We then have the alignment option. So we can choose to be left, center, or right aligned. We can also choose the number of slides per view. So you can see we have an option from default right the way through from one through to 10. We can also change these based upon the device that is viewed on, so we can set this up to be different values, whether you're viewing it on a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile device. So really cool, very simple and easy. Next up, we've got the width, so we can control the amount of width that's actually taken up to show our testimonial. You can see, very quick and easy, nice simple slider. We can work on a pixel value, or we can work on a percentage value. So we have a range of options available there. Next up, we've got the additional options, and you can see this is where we control various other elements of the actual template itself. So we can specify whether we want to have arrows on this. So you can see at the moment we've got arrows to the left and right, so we can show or disable those with a simple click. We can change our pagination. At the moment, we've got three dots, where we can change that between none, fraction, and progress. And you can see once we do that, we get a representation of what it's going to look like. Then we've got the transition duration. How long do we want that transition to take place? We can adjust that very easily so we can fine tune and tweak this to get exactly what we're looking for. Next up, we've got autoplay. Do we want these to automatically transition to the next in our sequence? We can turn that on and off and also we can control the autoplay speed. In other words, how long that particular testimony is going to stay on, on sort of screen before it transitions to the next one. We also have the option to pause on interaction. So if we take our mouse over that particular testimonial or we start to click the arrows, this will control that independently of the autoplay speed. And finally, we've got the image size. You can see we've got a range of different options. So the image size ensures that we've got the best quality image to display as part of our testimonial. Next up, if we jump over to the style section, you can see we can go through now and we can control other options. Again, we've got the space between, so we can choose the amount of space in between each of our testimonials. So if we jump back to our content section and we set the slides per view to be more, so let's just set that to be three. We can come over to our style section and we can adjust the amount of space in between each one of these testimonials to make sure whether they're not encroaching on each other. So you can see very easy to increase the space in. And again, we've got the option to control this based upon the devices being viewed upon. We can also go in and set background colors for each of the testimonials. So we can do something simple like this. You can see we can do that. We can also add a border in there if we want to. So a simple border. We can choose the color of the border. 
all the kind of options you'd expect to have in there. And again, we can control things like padding. So we say, let's add 20 pixels of padding all the way around that. All very simple. And if we want to, we can drop in a sort of border radius just to sort of round those off. So you can see it's very quick. The normal kind of things you're used to inside Elementor, they're all in there and very easy to work with. If we jump into our content section, you can now see we can control various other aspects. So again, we've got the gap in between all the different elements. So you can see we can control the gap between the image at the top and the actual text itself. And we can go through, we can set that based upon the device it's being viewed upon. We can set the text color in there if we want to. So we can easily change that to whatever color we think fits nicely. And we've got control of the typography. Again, all the normal options you're used to seeing inside Element or Style Panel. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about showing all those different things, but you can see everything's in there for the title, the name, the content, and so on. Next up, we've got the options for the image. So you can see we can easily control the size of this image. So let's just jump back to content, go back to our first one, and let's just drop in a picture in there. So you've got something in there so we can see what we're working with. So you can see a nice way of displaying your images, and we can easily control this when we come down to the image section. So we can easily increase the size of that, specify the gaps in between, any kind of borders we want to place on this. We can say we want to put a border on there. We'll set that to be white. All very simple, very intuitive. Nothing particularly rocket science about this, but all very simple. And again, we then drop down to the navigation section where we can control the actual style of the navigation. So at the moment, we've got arrows on there, so we can increase the size of those if we want to. Change the colors, they stand out a little bit more. And we can specify the size and so on of the pagination at the bottom. So you can see we can control that, the color of that, so we can bring everything in line with the blues and so on. All very simple. Over to advanced, and you can see all the normal options we have in there for dealing with margins and padding and Z-index and backgrounds and so on for the overall element, all set up inside there. And that's really all there is to dealing with this new widget for the Elemental Pro option. So you can see it's very simple, very intuitive. But again, it's a great way of adding extra content into your website and giving that real pro edge. Well, I hope you found the video useful. I hope it's given you insight into how you can use the testimonial slider for your web design with Elemental Pro. As always, if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content that's added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.